Well, mom, thank you for joining me on our both of our podcasts that we both co-own yes. together. Yes. Um, so last week you presented. This week it'll be my turn. And like we were talking about last podcast, mm-hmm. I think it'd be kind of cool to do like a little love language test yeah. to see what kind of love language it is. So I'm, I had already taken my test. I had sent to, I sent you one so you can actually do that. Okay. Oh, well, you didn't do it, so you can do it now. Well, you told oh. me to wait and do it online. Yeah. Only following directions. So, yeah. So, basically, the premise of it is that everyone has their own love language. Mm-hmm. They express love differently. They show love differently. They interpret acts of love differently. So, what you may do in terms of like, you know, you're like, oh, well, this is how I show love. I may not be acknowledging that type of love language. Okay. So, there's this really cool little website where you can actually take a test. It's called the Five Love Languages. It's the, mine the, says the love language quiz. Well, if it's the link I sent you, <laughs> it'll be the same one I just said out loud. Yes. So it is that one. There's basically, it's 30 questions. Oh, they, wow. they, they say the same thing. They reiterate the same thing a little over, but I think it's more of just to make sure. Um, so do you want me to ask the question? Do you want me to say it out loud so they can follow along? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would kind of, I would do the first 10 and then you can kind of like, Fill in the other 20 by yourself. Okay. So how do you describe yourself? An adult, a teenager? I'm taking this for my child. Okay. You do do those separately. Like do those and then once it starts asking you actual questions. Well, I'm an adult. Actual questions because it's going to tell you you're an adult. It's going to ask if you're in a relationship. It's going to ask like one other generic thing that they don't really don't need to know. Okay. You know. Um, Do, do, do. Ooh. Okay. But I can't answer it because that's... (laughs) Okay, okay, continue. And that's it. Uh, what's the first question? Was I an adult? Yeah, you, you're still on that one? How are you still on that one? That's no. the easiest question no. to answer. Yes, you're an adult. <laughs> no, answer the question and move on. I heard you went past that one. I, 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 I was at the one what's where... What's the I, second question? I don't remember. But What oh, question are you on it now? It asked me if I was in a relationship. And I How said is I, that a hard question to answer? I already asked it. But then what question are you on? <laughs> Do you like it when somebody yells at you? Oh, my God. It says, um, it's more meaningful when I could just spend alone time with someone I love, um, just us. Someone I love does something practical to help me out. (laughs) There's 30 (laughs) questions. You've barely handled three. And two of them are, are you an adult? And are you in a relationship? How has it taken this long? For those, I mean, those questions. Now. Well, I like both. What do you mean you like? Well, you I have like to pick both, one or the other. But I like both. You can't pick both. You can pick one uh, and or the other. All right. Is it more meaning for you when someone I love gives a little gift as a token of your love of concern for each other? I get to spend uninterrupted leisure time with those. I want a gift. Okay. Um, it's more meaningful when someone I love does something unexpected for me to help me with a project. I can share an innocent touch. Um. <laughs> Apparently I'm a big fan of touching, huh? <laughs> well, because I'm single and I don't have a relationship. Yes, you know, but this is so like, this is if you were in a relationship. Like what you oh, look for I in a partner. Oh, I thought this was like us. No, no. <laughs> I'm in a relationship. That's why I asked you, <laughs> are you in a relationship? I thought I was just wondering, like my general overall person. What? <laughs> what do you oh, mean? Oh, it's like if you're at line at Target, you want somebody to <laughs> endearingly hold you? <laughs> no. Okay. You're at Panda Express you... and you want someone to give you a random <laughs> gift? So I think maybe next time you should explain the rules better. Don't <laughs> you start. Okay. Oh gosh, that made me hot. Um, um, oh, okay. So if I was in a relationship, yes. If oh, you okay. were in a relationship. Okay. Okay. Now I get it. Jesus. All right. All right. Um, what's more meaningful to you when someone I love puts their arm around me in public? Someone I love surprises me with a gift. Oh well, now I can answer it properly because I did not want you. What question? What, what? Realistically, like, give me it, at the very bottom. It tells you what number you're on. What number are you on? No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Oh, five. Shut <laughs> up. 
You're on number five. Mom, there's 30 fucking questions. Well, do you want to talk to them while I do this? Yes, please. Okay. I don't know. I'm worried that you're going to misinterpret more questions. Mom, we're, Mom you were... <laughs> Well, you should have explained the rules in the beginning. What do you mean? I would have been like a number 29. I sent you this hours ago. And you told me, young man, yeah. to do it online or on. I didn't, well, on, I didn't think this was going to be. Well, I didn't think you were going to send me some perverted test. I didn't think you would confuse <laughs> the text. Well, yes. Oh, my gosh. Phew. Hot flash. Okay. All right. Talk. So oh. you. Uh, oh, my God. I uh, keep, uh, Mom, <laughs> you are. You, there's no, okay. This is not, this is a thing? Okay. Okay. What? No. no. Please continue. I'm trying. Okay. Um, so while she is doing, you have to read with your lips. You have to move your lips as you're reading. This is a thing. Can you, can you concentrate? I can hear you. Can you I can hear you can reading you out loud. Here, there. Um, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. okay. How it, what are you doing? It's warm. You don't need to make anyone. sounds. Just read. Read with your eyes. Okay. Oh, okay. So, I don't want to high oh five. Oh my <laughs> God. Will you just, okay. So while she is reading silently to herself okay. without any interruption, the test itself is, it's called five love languages and it gives you five, you know, basically ways to express how you take your love. And so they give you a questionnaire of 30 questions. Mom is on question six and Basically, after the 30 questions, it divides it into uh, five subcategories and it tells you what percentage um, is like your main source of love language. For example, I took the test earlier and I'm 33% words of affirmation in terms of my love language. And what that says, it says actions don't always speak louder than words. If this is your love language, unsolicited comments mean the world to you. Hearing the words, I love you are important. Hearing the reasons behind that love sends your spirits skywards. Insults can leave you shattered and are not easily forgotten. You thrive on hearing kind and encouraging words that build you up. And so that is my love language. My love language is um, words of, uh, was it words of affirmation? So I like when people tell me, you know, things like that. Like, hey, I love you. Or like, hey, you know, you did a great job. Or, hey, I'm really proud of you. That is my love language. I also we like reciprocating that. So I like telling people, you know, Hey, I'm really proud of you. Hey, that's a really good job. So my words of affirmation are both receiving and giving that kind of, um, you know, that, that kind of, um, affection, I suppose is the best word. How you doing over there? I'm on 18. Oh, wow. You're, I am, you're I'm sh- whipping through. Okay. This. Well, keep going. Yeah. So below that at 30%, I have acts of service. And it says, can helping with homework really be an expression of love? Absolutely. Anything you do to ease the burden of responsibilities weighing on an acts of service person will speak volumes. The words he or she wants most to hear, let me do that for you. Laziness, broken commitments, and making more work for them tell uh, speakers of this language their feelings don't matter. When others serve you out of love and not obligation, you truly feel valued and loved. And so I would also equally agree that I very, very much both one and the other, the words of affirmation was 30% or excuse me, 33 and acts of service is 30%. So I'm a very big person when it comes to like, Oh, well let me do this by me doing this, you know, task for you. It shows my love. And, and it actually, I never really, really acknowledged it, but it says when it said the, um, the words he or she wants most, oh, no, that one it says laziness, broken commitments, and making more work for them tell speakers of this love language their feelings don't matter. And that really resonates because the, my biggest pet peeve is when people make promises they don't follow through with or people who say things they don't mean or I'll go, oh, yeah, let's get lunch. And then we end up like never getting lunch. Those kind of commitments and those kind of false words make me feel you know really bad you know and and so like i like when people follow through so what was your primary love my primary love is words of affirmation okay 33 percent mine at 27 percent is quality time really yeah so do you mind reading that out sure um it gave me a warning what it says your results are not saved if oh yeah yeah that, that means don't get off that page okay So quality time. In quality time, nothing says I love you like full, undivided attention. Being there for this type of person is critical, but really being there with the TV off, fork and knife down, and chores and tasks on standby makes you feel truly special in love. Distractions, postponed activities, or the failure to listen can be especially hurtful. 
whether it's spending uninterrupted time talking with someone else or doing activities together, you deepen your connection with others through sharing time. This is really interesting. Yeah. You said that's you, you have 27% of mm -hmm. that. See, I took the test. Mine's only 13%. Oh, wow. Yeah. So our, our love language is significantly different. And if you think about it, it's very, it's, it's very evident that that is your love language. Yeah. Right? Because then I can go over to the next one at 23%. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, well, let's, let's focus on the oh. quality time thing for oh, just okay. a second. So, so, you know what, and truthfully, what really just kind of like, um, really stood out to mm -hmm. me was the whole, um, being there with the TV off makes you feel truly loved. Yeah. Distractions, postponed activities, or the failure to listen mm -hmm. can be especially hurtful. Yeah. Because remember in the past, I always felt like the invisible child. Yeah. So I always felt like I was overlooked mm -hmm. and not made important. And yeah. so when somebody like actually actively listens to the things that I'm saying really makes me feel, I guess, yeah. loved. Well, not only that too, but like, it, you know, it makes a lot of sense too. Like when you do something and you were like, Hey, do you want to come with me? Or, Hey, I'm going to go like, for example, yesterday when you went to go get the subs, you're like, I'm going to go get subs. Do you want to come with me? Yeah. Whereas I thought of it as like, Oh, well she just doesn't want to go by herself. This was your love language saying like, Hey, I would like to spend quality time with you. Even yeah. if it was as mundane as driving across town to pick up sandwiches and come back. Yeah. And so where I looked at it, you know, I was like, oh, she just doesn't want to go by herself. You looked at it. I was like, hey, I, this is how I express my love in, in sharing yeah. this time with each other. Yeah. Which I thought was really interesting. Yeah. Just kind of like um, not really doing anything, but just being together. And that's why one of the reasons why I enjoy like our little walks with Indy so yeah. much. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of like we're not we're both there because we want to be mm -hmm. not because we have to be. And it's just kind of a nice time with having um just being able to converse without a bunch of distractions yeah that makes total sense mm -hmm. and so it's interesting to see that you and i although have a lot in common we have different love languages so yours and i'm sorry but yours was words of affirmation words of affirmation and at 33 percent. so you and not, not to be rude but yeah. um so basically like when you're you're told like you did a good job or you did a good you job i'm proud of you i love you kind of thing that words of like fulfillment oh, are, cool. are, is, is basically my version of love language. Like, now, do you think that that's triggered by you feeling um, like nobody heard you when you were younger? Yeah, I reckon so. I reckon so it would come something like that. It would come something like, hey, like, or just maybe like, it makes me feel like my, uh, you know, everything I've done has been noticed and that my hard work has been acknowledged basically i think yeah. maybe it's that sense of acknowledgement that like hey you know you done you done good kid yeah because i know it's kind of your trigger like when like when i ask you for help yeah. and sometimes you have to struggle with the idea that if i like ask you questions or mm -hmm. if i like well what about this way it always kind of makes you feel like i'm not just you know kind of like you're you're feel like you're almost made to feel like i don't believe you or maybe you um, don't know what you're talking about no i think about. that's a little i think that's different oh, okay. i think it's more of just like hey like i noticed you've been working really hard i'm really proud of you kind oh, of cool. thing or like hey you know just want to let you know that like hey you really you really mean a lot to me kind of thing yeah you and know. and also too not to and i'm sorry if i interrupted you it's okay. but i've noticed lately here i i mean i have been you yeah. know really actively like when you say like an accomplishment that you've gotten yeah before our, you know, like counselor and really mm -hmm. learning how to listen, yeah. I think I would have um, been like, oh, well, this is what happened to me. Yeah. You it, know, yeah, here's my achievement. Yeah. That's 100% something that's mm -hmm. happened. And it's 100% what's it's 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 definitely something that really irritates me. And mm -hmm. it's and that's one of the reasons why I used to not acknowledge things or, or, mm -hmm. or tell you things that mm -hmm. were big milestones in my life because I'm like, I'm like, Oh, well I'd come to you with like this really cool achievement and you'd be like, well, great. Well, here's what's going on with my life. And mm -hmm. so it felt very diminished. It felt very um, unimportant, I suppose. So let me ask you this since I've stopped and I've been like, Oh, that's really cool. I'm really happy for you. I'm yeah. really proud of you. Yeah. I mean, does that, um, does it, 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 I would assume that makes you feel like, yeah, well it makes sharing a lot it makes it feel less of a burden. Yeah. You know, where I was like before I'd be like, okay, well I'll tell her enough to like, let her know what's going on, but she doesn't get the full details. And yeah, you know, it makes the achievements, it makes the milestones and the, you know, the, the goals that I've reached more meaningful now that I know that you're not at first it felt more of like a, you know, like, Oh, that's great. Okay. So, so about me, you know, like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great, great. Okay. So this is what's going on in my life. It felt, right. I felt very, um, underappreciated right and also too i mean going back to mine you know how yeah. i used to be like always interrupting you or mm -hmm. always going in your office mm -hmm. or i never gave you any um like 
alone space, time. Yeah. yeah. Or I, I, I did not respect your personal boundaries. Sure. I think that was me trying to force that, that interaction, that quality time yeah. out of you. Yeah, that's right. So I was doing it the wrong yeah. way. Especially because like we didn't have a whole lot of time to spend quality mm-hmm. time that you were trying to get it any way you could. And it was received wrong. Yeah. Received poorly. Oh yeah. No, it was like trying to stomp through a, a little flower field. I yeah. was completely doing it yeah. wrong. Yeah. So yeah. what was your, what was your second runner up? Um, Words of affirmation. Oh, was it? Okay. So that's yeah. what we were just talking about. Like, yeah, hey, like I'm really proud of you. and You're doing really well. Yeah. And tr- truthfully, in myself, I absolutely 100% can see the correlation. Yeah. Because, I mean, not only spending quality time with somebody, but somebody who I really care about and respect, mm-hmm. taking the time to be like, wow, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I just listened to what you had to say. Sets right there. You yeah. Know? Uh, now, what percentage was that? 23%. Oh, wow. So it was like right behind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then at twenty percent was acts of service. Sure. Yeah. In so that mine that's my second one and that was the words of affirmation was thirty three, that one was thirty. Right. So that's a big love language for me. Yeah. So like yeah, um last weekend when you helped me set up mm-hmm. all my stuff. Yeah. You know, that was your your That was acts my way, yeah, yeah, that was my very expressing my love and gratitude. It was just like, Hey, let me do this for you. I, I, I can you know, I have the knowledge of it. I can I can put this for you. And, I, and like I said, like, I don't mind doing it. I think the part where I get frustrated is when very similar to how the acts of her says is like, Hey, I'll do this for you. And you're like, no, 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 no. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll worry about it later. And like, it feels very underwhelming and it feels a little diminishing. Right. And yeah. I know that, um, I've mentioned, and I'm going to put this in the wash, but I need to wipe mine. <laughs> don't look at me like that. I just, yeah, nothing. What? Nothing. I'm going to put it in the wash. And I, and I believe your commitment for it to get there. There. Great. Now Indy's going to put it in her mouth. No. Um, so like, um, like I've had some issues with my computer and, yeah. and I have, you know, gotten them to that point of mm-hmm. where I can't go any farther. Yeah. So for me, that's kind of like me trying to respect you mm-hmm. and your acts of kindness. Yeah. It's like, because I think it, it, you know, and let, let me ask you this, like, like if I, you know how I was just like constantly like, oh, this needs to be done. Robert will do it. Yeah. Was that just kind of like almost like a slap in the face to you? Yeah. Or? It made me feel very under, underappreciated yeah. and it made me feel like my time or my, you know, what I had going on in my life didn't matter where you were like, oh, well it won't, you know, he, he'll do it anyway. So like, I won't try. And it made me feel very, um, um, you know, just it just obviously didn't feel very good. It made me feel like your time was more important than mine. Well, do you think that that had any correlation with like that's your love language? Mm-hmm. And I was just kind of not, I wasn't of, um, I wasn't appreciating yeah. it. And I wasn't basically honoring it. To me, yeah. it must have made you feel like, well, this is my love language, but you're just like making it uh, like a job. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Know? Yeah, yeah. I felt, yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Um, and if you read that article or that little blurb, yeah, um, towards the middle, I, I touched on this, but it says laziness, broken commitments, and making more work for them tell speakers of this language that their feelings don't matter. Yeah, and that's exactly how I felt, mm-hmm. you know, especially when it would be like something so simple, like you know, like hey, you know, it would be like two buttons and it would be fixed. And so it wasn't so much that I was irritated that I was helping you; I was irritated that you didn't take the time to help yourself before you came yeah. to me. Yeah, and like doing the auxiliary yeah. cord on my computer, mm-hmm. like my camera. Yeah, and like and like and like it. I mean, how easy is it, right? You put a battery in and you. Play the battery into the wall like i I didn't need to do it and because i didn't need to do it you didn't need to bother me right and you didn't and that was fantastic it was and and then that kind of makes that achievement so much more greater because like when you have to come to my for me for help it's it's a it's a problem that requires a solution correct not me connecting a wire to a camera to camera to the to the phone you know and also too i think you know and in looking inward for myself for me it's not like me coming to you like a an unruly child yeah. of like <laughs> yeah. like i plugged it in wrong yeah yeah you yeah. know that, yeah it's not a gimmick or a joke yeah or, yeah and, 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 and that's a really interesting way of putting it you know like you know my time is that in that in that right there in itself maybe i didn't really think about it but my time is just as valuable as yours oh absolutely and because of that is you're like oh well i I don't need Robert for this because I can do it. And, and, and it makes me feel better 
for when you do come to me for help yeah. then. You know, it makes the it makes the task a little bit more meaningful. Yeah. Because I know it's something that I can do because I know I have the knowledge to do it other than rather than like I'm like the maintenance guy. Yeah. Yeah. So Yeah. And the only reason I asked you to double check the battery is because remember I showed you like that little trap door mm-hmm. on the bottom? Yeah. And you were all like, huh. So that's mm-hmm. where I had to put the auxiliary yeah. cord in. I just wanted to make sure that, you know. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. Your, your camera's just different. Yeah. And it actually has a little port for that auxiliary power. Perfectly yeah. cool. I never, I've never had any of my cameras experience that. So yeah. it was just a little new to me too. Yeah. So. so, and it was just kind of like that little thing in the back of my head where I'm like, yeah, you know what? I, it might be beneficial just to have them double check. Yeah everything I did. Yeah. No, it was, it was super cool. Was yeah. Cool. So now my next question is, is because the last two mm-hmm. categories is both touch and gift giving. Yeah. How, what, what's your next one? Mine was 17% at physical touch. 17% physical touch. Really interesting. Yeah. yeah. It says, uh, a person whose primary language is physical touch is not surprisingly very touchy hugs, pats on the back and thoughtful touches on the arm. They can all be ways to show excitement, concern, care, and love. Physical presence and accessibility are crucial, while neglect or abuse can be unforgivable and destructive. Appropriate and timely touches communicate warmth, safety, and I love you. Mm -hmm. You know, and truthfully for myself, um, I was really surprised that touching was so low. Really? Yeah, because, you know, in the past I have felt very unloved, you know, and just by a whole lot of people Mm -hmm. in my life. And to me before my journey of like finding myself, mm-hmm. I really correlated touch with love. Sure. You know, that like, intimacy of physical touch. Yeah. yeah. And I think that as I grow and I become more settled and in okay with myself, yeah. I don't need that, that physical sure. stimulation. Yeah. I know love when I see it and feel it. Yeah. I don't have to have somebody yeah. constantly touching me. That makes sense. I, I, yeah, I think I very similarly agree with you. Like the physical touch is more of a bonus of that affection of that person. It's not, Oh, this person touched me. They must mean I love them kind of thing. Or like if they're arms length then that means I love them kind of thing. So yeah, and to me, it almost feels controlling. Yeah, that's fair. You know, like if somebody is like really like mm-hmm. I have to constantly mm-hmm. like have my hand on you. It triggers mm. me for being like in a controlling kind of yeah. abusive like relationship. Like Indy's love language is physical touch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. With no personal boundaries. So then, okay. So then what's after that? What do you have after that? Receiving gifts. Okay. So that's your last one. Yeah. What would you get for that one? 13%. Really? Mine's 7%. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it says, don't mistake this love language for materialism. The receiver of gifts thrive on the, uh, this is the receiver of gifts f- thrive on the love, thoughtfulness, and effort behind the gift. If you speak this language, the perfect gift or gesture shows that you are known, uh, that you are known, you are cared for, and you are prized above whatever else sacrificed to bring you to bring the gift to you a misused uh, yeah a missed birthday or a hasty thoughtful a thoughtless gift would be disastrous so would the absence of everyday g- gestures gifts are heartfelt symbols to you or someone else that you love and affection for you so basically it's like hey man like i like oh this this like really you know basically i was thinking of you this is like the perfect mm-hmm. gift it's not so much like hey i brought you this because i saw it or like hey i brought you this because it was on sale it was more of like hey you know i know this really means a lot to you and i and i went out of my way to buy it for you kind yeah of thing. and truthfully for me i would rather have a small very personal detailed mm-hmm. gift instead of something extravagant sure. yeah. because that just brings me back to being married mm-hmm. where he would be a complete monster yeah. and then buy me a new car. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's very interesting because it says it right in the beginning. It's not, it's not the same as materialism. So that, yeah. that right in itself is what that I, I would cl- classify as materialism. Yeah. That's going to be more of like, Hey, you know, um, I saw, let's just say like, you know, let's just say you play the piano and your piano bench was like worn and torn. Like, hey, I yeah. saw this and, you know, I, I knew that your piano bench was worn and torn. So I bought you a new piano bench or like, hey, like, you know, your watch is broken or like, you know, like, hey, I fixed this for you kind of thing. Like, and I bought you this do thing. It's, it's more of like a heartfelt gesture. Yeah. You know? Whereas instantly I was like, yeah, don't, don't try to, yeah. don't try to cover up your, your indiscretions mm-hmm. with, um, yeah. with gifts. Yeah. Completely different, but it's mm-hmm. understandable to get the two blurred. Yeah. And that, and I think that probably maybe in itself is the hardest love language is, um, gifts, you know? Yeah. You know, what's funny is I remember when we used to go to yoga, Mm -hmm. um, there was somebody that would go with us who I thought always had the perfect life Mm -hmm. and, and, um, they were going through a divorce. And I remember her saying like, yeah, he just, you know, he just showers me with too many gifts. And, Mm -hmm. and it was, 
I remember stopping and thinking and even she's like, yeah, no, that's his love language, but mm. I need more. Yeah. And to me, it's like the, the burning question is, is like, do you think with, do you think that that's something that you can change? I mean, because that he was like, his love language was giving gifts. Hers mm. was something else. Yeah. It was leading to their divorce. And do you think that if they both tried, they could like, you know, like change their perception. I, well, I, I think honestly, I think, I mean, without knowing who you're talking about or knowing the context of the divorce, mm -hmm. I don't think it's as simple as like, Oh, well this is just that it, you know, I should have changed. I think, I think it's more of a, once you kind of understand the person and the motives behind their actions, then it makes loving them easier. But I don't think it's, you know, I don't think the divorce is leading is, is the, the main reason behind the divorce isn't because this person bought yeah. this person gifts as their love language. It's just that might have been in a cop out or that might have been a, an excuse or a, a scapegoat. Mm -hmm. There might be more underlying things, but I do think it's important to know the the love language of your partner, you know, because it makes it makes a lot more sense. Like like just, you know, obviously, obviously, again, for references, you and I are not partners, mm -hmm. but but obviously, again, it under, it makes a lot more sense knowing that your love language is quality time and you know, when you ask me to go places with you, it's not so much of like, you can't do it by yourself. It's that you would enjoy quality time with your son. Yeah. But yeah. I think that you and I, and even Brandon are in a unique position yeah. to where we didn't learn these things when, when I was younger, sure. I didn't learn these things when I was younger. And then I wasn't that mom for you when sure. you and Brandon were younger. Yeah. So to me, this is like something, this is like part of our, our own growth yeah. of like, okay, you know what? You didn't get any guidance as a child, but you know, now we can respect each other as adults and mm. see it yeah. instead of it just being something that's natural sure. to other people. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, absolutely. And it yeah. makes a lot of sense, you know, like the, the motive behind their actions mm -hmm. makes a lot more sense knowing where these actions are coming from or where the, where the motives are coming from behind the actions. And so yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. I have to tell you, probably one of the biggest things that I have come to in my brain and probably one of the biggest, um, almost a sense of peace yeah. is me just being able to step back and be like, I accept me for who I am. I accept you for who you are. Yeah. I accept Brandon for he, who he is. Mm -hmm. And I'm no longer trying to shove everybody into like this role mm -hmm. that I think everybody should be in. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. And like you said, like you like, you would come in over there and like have forced quality time and think it was okay. And, and what you thought was okay was Brandon and I being, um, you know, Brandon, it would, Brandon and I would lead to resentment, right? Mm -hmm. We're like, Oh God, mom won't leave us alone. Like, Oh God, I'm afraid to go over here. Cause mom will chase after me and kind of thing. Whereas you were like, Oh, well I just want them. I want to show them how much I love them. Well, you know what? And that's just the thing, Robert is, I mean, looking at it, I mean, to me, I mean, I absolutely wanted to show you how much I loved yeah. you, but to me, truthfully, it was almost like a sense of panic. Sure. Yeah. You, you, you know? seemed really manic. Yeah. Thinking back on it, it was very mm -hmm. like, it was, there wasn't a whole lot of like, um, thought behind your actions. It was mm -hmm. just, it was just more sporadic and chaotic, I suppose would be. Yeah. Way. Because I was just afraid that it was going to end or we weren't going to get the hell, yeah. you know, it was almost like. It's, it would, it was almost like seeing, watching a slow motion car wreck and sure. I was trying to stop it, yeah. you know, because I was thinking we had lunch before we had the podcast, all three of us sat down and had lunch. And mm -hmm. you know what, to me, it was a really relaxing lunch yeah. and I don't remember. I, and I wasn't talking the no, whole time. We just watched Bob's burgers and yeah. chilled. Yeah. And to me, that wouldn't have happened six months ago or seven yeah. months ago. Yeah. You would have forced ago. conversation and been like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And you know, it just would, it wouldn't have been as organic. Yeah. We're like, everybody, we're going to be on a TikTok. You yeah, know? yeah. And I was do, I did one, but it was just for me and my food. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, it, yeah, no, it's, it's been a really, really just satisfying journey to mm -hmm. be on. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what do you think Brandon's love language is after, after taking the test and maybe kind of reading some of the, the things, what would you, without Brandon taking the test, what do you think his would be? Um, truthfully, mm -hmm. I would say, I don't think it's gifts. No, it's definitely not. It's not gifts. Um, I don't think it's physical touch. Definitely not. Um, acts of service. Pr I would probably say acts of service because he's always been one that would like jump and 
like mm. do something mm. for somebody else. That's and, fair. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. always the one that would like give his last five dollars to yeah. help somebody okay, else. That's fair. Yeah. Um, so I would say probably acts of service, then words of affirmation, mm. and then quality time. Yeah, I would say I would say acts of service and then quality time. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. It's interesting now that you kind of see the five categories, you can kind of put people like in their without them taking the test, kind of like in their just thinking of their mannerisms and behaviors in a certain boxes to be like, oh, okay, well, that well, that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. yeah. Because I mean, just like the other day, the trash man, I was going to go put it in the trash cans and Brandon's like, oh, I got it. Yeah. You know, but I had trash in my hand. So I just followed him out and he looked at me. He's like, why are you out here? Yeah. And to him, that was his love language. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'll put in the trash cans yeah. for you. Let and then, me, yeah, let me yeah. do this for you to show that I love you. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it in, in, in the beginning, he was like, you know, and the simple fact that I followed him out there, he was kind of like, you yeah, know, a little taken aback, but then when I showed him all the trash in my hand, he's like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's definitely makes a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. 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 No, I really that was a really that was a really good one. Cool, right? Yeah. yeah. And I apologize, but I don't have the subject yet it's okay. for next weekend. Yeah, we and have a week to prepare yeah that and also too i don't want to just sit here and then be like okay 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 yeah 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 yeah. you You don't want to shoot from the hip yeah Yeah, i I think and i respect you for that you know because you don't you don't need the answers right away yeah because i really did like the podcast before that Mm -hmm. one yeah um i can't remember what it was (laughs) what was that don't worry about it it's fine i'm just kind of curious well look do you remember i mean i have it on my youtube um just you know it's like Things happen. Look on. Um, why do we? Look why on do we put off the things we should be doing? Um, no, no. Find your happiness one yeah. step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So I really liked that one. Good. You know, and maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I we mean, got a week to think about it. I know, but it's been such a cool journey um, that we've been on. Mm-hmm. So I want to, but I really want to try to keep my subjects positive yeah. because I did find that a lot of mine were a little bit more like, you know, I was, I think I was focusing on the negative a little bit too That's much fair. and I like the, yeah. the happy, uplifting, positive. Well, it seems like you're in the, in the right direction. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Mom. Well, do you want to tell me where to find us? I do. You can find Robert on Instagram is Robert Robert Pike Pike. He is on YouTube, Twitter, um, Twitch, mm-hmm. and is that it? YouTube, it. Twitter, yeah. Twitch yep. as Sherbert. And I am gray hair and tattoos across the board. I dig it. All right. Well, thank you again, Robert. That was a really good one. Yeah, no worries. All right, All everybody, right. have a great week, and we will see you next Monday. Yep. Bye. Bye.